Hi everyone, KNWA and Fox 24 Chief Meteorologist Dan Scoff in the Weather Center on this Sunday evening. And I know there's been a lot of talk about the cold weather coming. We've been telling you for the past, uh, oh, let's say seven days that a major pattern change is about to take place. And that happens on Tuesday. Now tomorrow, you still have one more warm day to get all your outdoor chores done. And yes, it will warm up again eventually, but not for at least 10 days and possibly even two weeks. And I'm going to give you the breakdown on why all this is going to happen. First of all, the time of this recording is just a little after 10 o'clock on Sunday night. And look at the cold weather plunging in. Bismarck, North Dakota coming in at 23 degrees. Minneapolis is at 32, 31 in Billings. The Arctic air is plunging in. It has begun. Five degrees, single digits in high level in Fort McMurray, nearly single digits in Edmonton and Calgary, and that cold air will just continue to pile in. So as you'll see on the satellite and radar, watch how the cloud cover is moving almost straight north to south, a little bit of a north-northwest to south-southeast motion. That is what we call the Arctic Express, and it's going to bring in some cold air. In fact, Already on this Sunday night into Monday, there is going to be a winter storm. It's already taking place. Snow in Montana, the Dakotas, that will continue into Minnesota as well as Wisconsin. In fact, you can see the strip of winter storm warnings extending all across the northern plains and across the northern sections of the U.S. Now, that system doesn't affect us, but as we show you on the satellite and radar, the water vapor is hinting at that big low pressure system that's beginning to organize. In fact, there's a couple of lows that have developed. One is very close to Hudson Bay. That's going to continue to filter the cold air into the area. You probably heard about the remnants of Nuri, which was a super typhoon earlier, became the bearing bomb when pressure bottomed out nearly 920 millibars. And that is causing a kink in the jet stream. Well, now that jet stream is starting to dip to the south. And as this low pressure system uh, continues to develop and merges to the east, there's going to be a block that develops over Greenland. That Greenland block will make a very large low pressure system to our northeast. And that's going to continue to pour in that cold air as the jet stream takes more of a north to south jog. So let's bring it in locally here and we'll show you what happens temperature wise and enjoy the beautiful day on Monday. It's going to start off way above freezing, south winds kicking up, it will be a breezy day but look at those high temperatures exceeding 70 degrees in some locations and uh, most of northwest Arkansas will be very close to 70, albeit a little bit on the windy side and that's because a very strong arctic cold front is coming in. Now for the last several days we've been telling you at midnight the high temperature would be right around the mid to upper 50s and we will fall throughout the day for the most part with 40s expected during the afternoon. Well we made that arctic front even larger. As you can see 10 o'clock it's nudging all the way through almost all of Kansas into northeastern Oklahoma but hasn't quite made it into northwest Arkansas yet. At midnight the high temperature in Fayetteville will be very close into the middle and upper 50s to around 60 degrees but watch how quick the temperature drops. This front is going to bring a major temperature change. We're talking 20 degrees in a few hours. Notice how the front kind of kinks around as it moves into the shallow cold air mass and affects the terrain of the Ozarks. That's going to stall out the front just for a brief time, kind of, you know, push it back a little bit. Then it continues to surge south, or really nothing is stopping this front from coming in. At 9 o'clock Tuesday morning, close to freezing. Now, thankfully, we'll have a little bit of sunshine. We'll moderate a little bit, but not much. Mid-40s, I think lower 40s at best. And then by Tuesday night, watch this, already at freezing by 10 o'clock, Wednesday morning in the mid to upper 20s, and then Wednesday afternoon, we moderate a little bit, but it will continue to get colder after Wednesday, and that will lead up to the weekend, and we have some interesting stuff happening over the weekend. Me personally, I think we do see precipitation. Some of that will be in the form of a wintry mix, including the potential for freezing rain, sleet, and snow. Obviously, we're six days out, so a lot is, you know, has to be ironed out. The fine-scale details have to be refined. However, as you will see, Monday night and into Tuesday, there's that jet stream taking a dip. And essentially, this is the strength of the jet stream and how strong it is. And you can see that jet really taking a dip across the area. So 
That's what the jet stream's looking like Tuesday night as that front comes in. Now watch what happens on Friday and into Saturday. A very large low pressure system starts to develop off the west coast obviously the timing of this system still has to be refined but it does appear over the weekend a very large low pressure system will march eastward there you can see the big dip in the jet stream look at that jet stream energy we're talking over a 150 mile an hour sustained winds in the jet that's about uh, 30,000 feet up in the air and so there is your jet stream nosing in. Now this is going to create several ripples of low pressure to move into the area from Saturday afternoon all the way through about Sunday night and into Monday. Then the system swings east. But look at this. The jet stream still is in a northwesterly to southeasterly pattern that's going to continue to pour in that cold air. So cold air really isn't going anywhere for the next several days. And we're including possibly as long as maybe 14 days of cold weather. This is going to be a prolonged cold snap and the jet stream really doesn't change much. Now, as we look at Saturday, notice 6 o'clock Saturday evening. This is according to one computer model and this is one that I definitely trust a lot more often than what we call the GFS, which is the Global Forecasting System. Uh, with the uh, NSEP models. But watch what happens Saturday night into Sunday. We're continuing to get snow, those little ripples of energy coming in, and just a small change will affect this snowfall forecast in a major way. This is not exactly what's going to happen. However, you can see a very large swath of winter precipitation. Now, depending on what the thermal profiles are, if we have a warm air uh, about uh, three to 4,000 feet above the ground, which creates a little melting in the mid-levels. That all has to be, you know, refined and, and fine-tuned. It's going to be a very difficult forecast. The point is, though, we have that potential for cold weather. It's coming in. Cold is definitely moving in as we head into our Tuesday, especially Tuesday in the morning hours. Our high temperature will be early on in the day. We'll fall throughout the majority of the day. A lot colder Tuesday afternoon. Wind chills in the low 30s. We fall even more on Wednesday. Thursday even colder. And then we're watching that system that swings in off the west coast of the United States. Lots of jet stream energy. But still, this is not a set in stone forecast. That's why we can't give you accumulations. We can't tell you what the main precipitation type will be. But me personally, I think we do see precipitation over the weekend. And honestly, I think it's going to be during the Razorback game Saturday night. That looks to be the bullseye for the timing. Starting Saturday, late morning into the afternoon, extending all the way through about Sunday morning. So, of course, I'll be here all week. I'll give you the latest details. But until then, keep you here with your weather authority, and we will keep you up to date with the latest.